you guys, I'm gonna give you eight tips for creating magical, beautiful, dreamy, realistic eyes. By the way, make sure you do not miss the special announcement at the end of this video. You're not gonna wanna miss it. Yeah. <laughs> Tip number one is especially if you're a beginner, don't feel like you're cheating if you trace or you transfer, use a projector, whatever it is you need to transfer your picture onto your painting surface. Professional artists do it all the time. In fact, most realistic professional artists transfer their images when they first begin a painting. And the way I learned about transferring images is from professional artists. I read about it in magazines, I read it in books, and so it's very common. And so don't feel like you're cheating and you still have to use a lot of drawing skills after you get the image transferred. Once you start painting, that original transfer is gonna get covered up and you'll have to rely a lot on your drawing skills. So you will still use a lot of your drawing skills um, even though you transferred. So part of getting beautiful eyes is um, getting your proportions right, getting them in the right spot and getting all the details in. So uh, I would recommend, especially if you're a beginner, to just go ahead and transfer your picture. Okay, tip number two is start with a good reference photo. For this painting that I'm showing you in this video, I had a beautiful reference photo with beautiful reflections in the eyes already and that really helps. How do you get a good reference photo? If you can take your own pictures, be sure to uh, get on the animal's level and be in natural light. Don't use a flash and uh, get uh, um, your subject in the prettiest light you can access, which if you can is in the morning or in the afternoon, late afternoon when the sun is lower on the horizon, you'll just have better light. Uh, but there are other lighting situations you can use to get really good photographs of eyes. So just be sure that you start with the best reference photo you can. And really that's the trick to any good painting half the battle is starting with a good reference photo when you are a realistic painter. Tip number three, use the right brushes. Um, I'm gonna show you the brush that I use the most in this painting. This is a Simply Simmons size zero liner. So this is the brush that I use the most in this painting. I did use my much more expensive Alvero Castagnette brush some but really for the eyes they're so tiny even for just wetting the area with clear water like I always do I used this brush and then I used it to put on the um, paint so this is almost the only brush that I used for this particular painting and a lot of my eyes paintings that I or a lot of the paintings where I'm painting the eyes this is the my go-to brush that I've been using lately okay tip number four is get that glint in the eye and not just get it, but get it right. So get it in the right spot and get it the, the right shape because anywhere you have pure white in your painting, your viewer is gonna look at that area. So um, your white areas in the eye need to be spot on. If they're supposed to be a half moon shape, make sure you get that. If they're supposed to be in the upper right corner, make sure you get them in the right spot etc etc and make sure you get them there because you need that bright white to really add that final sparkle so you can use masking or you can use a white gel pen um, there's a lot of white ink gel pens out right now that are really good that are archival um, this is one that I just bought it's um, a uniball signo broad it was five dollars at my local art store let me see if I can show you. But this is white ink and it's uh, marketed as an archival ink. So this is great. And it has really uh, changed my game. I just got it last week and I'm really enjoying it. It's really helping me do a do some more white highlights that come out really natural. Like I've used this a lot for whiskers. It's been great. But this is also perfect for if you 
aren't able to use masking or if your area gets covered up, you can rely on this to add a little, little dot of glint in the eye. So try it, you'll like it. <laughs> okay, tip number five, punch up those reflections. So really look at your reference photo. Is there any colors in the reflections in the eye? Punch them up a bit. With this dog, he had blue reflection, reflections, so I brightened them up a little bit even more than what they are in the reference photo. I used phthalo blue for this particular painting, and I really punched that little bit up. I, you don't want to overdo it, but you want to make sure that you get uh, as many colors in the eye as you can, but keep it realistic looking. So uh, that can really help if you punch up the colors just a little bit in those reflections and really make the eyes sparkle. Okay, tip number six is about the darks in the eye. Where are the darks? In the pupil and in the eyeliner, usually around the eye. So you wanna make sure you get those really dark. Sometimes you might have to paint over those areas one or two times to get them really dark, but it's really important to get them really, really dark, really black for those little areas that, um, it's, it's kind of like eyeliner on a woman. It really makes the eyes stand out and it's really gonna draw your viewer's eye if both your most dark area and your most white area is right in the eye. That will lead the viewer's eye right here. <laughs> so that's important. So the white glint is really important, but equally important are those super dark, dark areas. So make sure you get those right too. Tip number seven is um, make sure that you really focus on details around the eyes. You don't have to get the details on the haunches. You don't have to get the details in the, the tail, but all the little details around the eye, the contours of the eyebrow area, um, the eyelashes are really, really important. The eyelashes will really help um, punch up your eyes and really make them look amazing and really draw the viewer in. So make sure that you get all those details down really well and uh, this is where this gel pen can come back into play, especially with um, this painting. In fact, with this painting, I used the gel pen on um, the um, eyelashes at the very end a little bit. You can easily overdo it, so just a little bit. Just like when you wear jewelry, you don't wanna wear 10 necklaces. With this, you don't wanna put 20 zillion whiskers or a bunch of glints in the eye. Just a touch will do it. And then if you overdo it, then it kind of ruins the painting too. So be careful with that. Don't overwork it. Um, you want to get those details around and in the eyes captured really well. Okay, tip number eight, my last tip, you guys, <laughs> to remember your hard and soft edges within the eye. You want to think of the eye as a painting in and of itself. So to design a good painting, what do you have to do? You have to have hard and soft edges. For the eye, within the eye, you want to have hard and soft edges too. And usually the eyeliner is where you have the hard edges. And then within the eye, you want to melt some colors together. You want to melt um, some of the black of the pupil into the iris. Uh, that can really make it look a lot more magical, a lot more professional, a lot more painterly. Another part of having soft edges is right around the outside of the eye. If there's a dark area right here, for example, and there's a dark area here, you can melt these two together and just make it a disappearing edge. And that will really um, add some painterly qualities to your painting, make it look a lot more magical. So you want to find opportunities around the eye where you can meld the inside of the eye to the outside, um, to the fur area, if you can. So there you have it, you guys, my eight tips for how to create magical, dreamy, painterly, yet realistic eyes. And I hope those tips helped. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Be sure to hit subscribe, hit the bell notification next to the subscribe. So whenever I publish a new video, you'll be sure to get um, an email whenever I upload a new video and I've been uploading new videos every um, one to two times every week. So um, be sure to tune in for that. And now for a special announcement. It's really special. Don't leave until you see this. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, 
I hope you'll give me a like and also come on over to my Patreon account where I will post a video about where I will post a video on this entire painting. You can learn how I did everything from the fur to the eyes to the background and more. Thank you. Bye. Say bye. Bye. Bye.